Hello ladies and gentlemen and a very warm welcome to Evolving Consciousness. In continuation with our series on the same the surfer and the CEO, today we will move on to the next character in the particular plot. In our previous video, we talked about the fact that the protagonist meets a saint in the cathedral church and the saint gives him pearls of wisdom which he can integrate in his life and become a better version of himself. Now in today's video, we will talk about the next character in the fictional plot of this phenomenal book called The Saint, Surfer and the CEO by, written by the international leadership coach Mr. Robin Sharma. Now coming to the surfer, now before we move to the surfer, there is one point which the saint had delivered to the protagonist which I failed to acknowledge in the previous video and that point was about the pursuit of a cause. So the saint tells this protagonist that it is absolutely indispensable for anyone to maneuver their days and always have this cause in their mind because unless we have a cause in life, life seems meaningless. He says the secret of passion is purpose. Because if you have a lot of things to do, but you don't know why you are doing it, it's like you are moving headless. There is a beautiful quote which says the purpose of life is a life of purpose. Now purpose may seem a very heavy word to begin with. It might seem like an extremely philosophical undertone. It might seem like a word with an extremely philosophical undertone. But if you look at it from a layman's standpoint as well, one will understand that even the day-to-day -day activities which normal people engage in, if they don't have goals articulated or scribbled in a paper, it makes them feel unorganized. And if you have a larger purpose, a larger mission which need not necessarily be grand as per the world's viewpoint, as per the world's view. But the point the saint was trying to drive that when you have a purpose which is larger than yourself. Now when we talk about purpose and having a mission, some of us might think it's all about career or it's all about uh, creating a legacy. But purpose is not only about yourselves. There is a beautiful line in that particular, in the chapter which wherein the saint is conveying these messages to the person. He says, when we move from a compulsion to survive to a commitment to serve, our life cannot help but explode into success. When we shift from a compulsion to survive to a commitment to serve, our life cannot help but explode into success. Now success can mean different things to different people but you will feel truly successful with them because that is what matters. The world's validation, the world's certification is immaterial to us. What really matters is have we grown in our own eyes and if the answer is yes, you my friend are successful. Now coming to the next character. Now the next character is very interesting. So this person travels to a beach and he finds this uh, very entertaining and very interesting character, the surfer, who likes to spend most of his time in the beach and is always about surfing. He's called the surfer. The beginning of that chapter starts with the titan meeting with the master of a heart. Now to begin with, this is not the layman and the stereotypical understanding when you say meeting with the master of the heart. This guy is no way going to propose theories of how we can make someone's heart or how we can break the heart. But it's way deeper than that. So the protagonist meets this surfer and they have casual conversations, a formal interaction of introductions. And it so happens that the surfer knows that this person is going to meet him and uh, Mr. Father Mike, who was the saint, 
has already informed the surfer that this person is going to meet you. And they start having the casual conversations like friends. And then the surfer starts speaking wisdom. I have tried to culminate the major points of what the surfer is trying to address here. The surfer is primarily talking about moving from the head to the heart. Now this might seem like he is pointing us to become all about heart. But it's to be very critical, to be very observational of the things which the surfer is talking about. Most of us are stuck in the head. We are all about intellect. We are all about what we can do, how we can think and what are the things I need to do. But seldom, very few of us think from the heart. Now this does not mean that you start thinking from the heart and you become overly emotional or overly sensitive. The surfer encourages the person, the protagonist to maintain this fine balance. Now the character of the surfer is also very interesting. The surfer was a very successful and known CEO of a multinational as per the plot. He had everything by the age of 40 which anyone can dream of. A private jet, a great house in the islands, in one of the posh islands, many cars and a trophy wife. He had every one of the things which a materialist dreams of. But the surface says, and now the conversation of wisdom starts, he says, I had everything at my disposal. But what didn't change was the person I saw in the mirror every day was the same person who was lethargic, who was not very fulfilled in his life. I could still feel hunger in his face despite having everything. A materialist person thinks to grab or things to acquire. But still, I couldn't see signs of fulfillment with him. And then began the exploration, the deep exploration of within. He says that he quotes a beautiful quote by Carl Jung. He says that when you are looking outside, you can dream. But when you look within, you awaken. The point he is trying to drive is to understand the mechanics of the entire thought process. The fact that when he says move from the head to the heart, he is pointing us to become more of less intellectual and more about rekindling the, the most uh, intense desires of the heart. He is basically inviting us to awaken the inner child which most of us have slaughtered. The reason we slaughter the inner child is because we think it's a waste of time. But the surfer is saying that the more you do that, the more you are away from bliss and happiness. In this context, I am reminded of a quote by Ramana Maharishi. He said something very beautiful and deep in one of his quotes. He said, there is nothing wrong in chasing happiness. What is wrong? is chasing it outside, whereas it essentially lies within. There is nothing wrong in chasing happiness, but what is wrong is to chase it in the wrong place. Now this surfer is an absolutely contrast character, because he doesn't look like a saint, he doesn't look like a spiritualist, he looks like an average surfer. But the way he is speaking, the way he is articulating things is nothing less than a spiritualist. This also talks about the importance of not giving it to the physical appearance of the person, but being aware of the words he is talking, his demeanor. Because a person might seem like a spiritualist, he might have a lot of robes and he might cosmetically present himself to be a spiritualist, but probably he would not be a spiritualist. There are people in the spiritual community who are having a rat race. They want to 
give a powerful message they want to seem like they are in authoritative positions and contrary to that a true spiritualist can also be a person living amidst the material population there's a point which the surfer says and i found it very valid in today's context he says that the best way to enlighten to get enlightened is not to run away from the material world but to be in the material world amidst all the chaos and confusion but still remain detached to still remain detached from the outcomes because it's a very safe place to run away from the material world go in a forest wherein you don't have any triggering buttons where you don't have any one to irritate you or frustrate you but what really is a test of your character is when you are amidst the material problems and chaos and amidst all of that confusion chaos mystery frustration if you are able to handle your state the natural state which every human being was born with that is a sure shot sign of enlightenment now there's a lot of detailing which the surfer talks about in his in this book and he gives a lot of beautiful examples one can always read this phenomenal book the saint surfer and ceo but i will just try to summarize it briefly and what are the main points the points which i found tremendous value in i am just trying to present that in this video one of the points he says is to rekindle your passions and to keep the heart alive now he starts giving some practical ways wherein how one can rekindle the heart with them how we can connect to the heart with them he says rekindle your passions now passion in itself a very complicated subject very few of us can discover our true passion if there's one way which i have learned uh, by which a person can unravel his passion through one simple question if you answer this question to yourself you have discovered your passion let's say let's assume a scenario that you have all the money in the world let's say that you are not doing something to earn money let's say you are already gifted by a lot of ancestral properties and wealth in such a scenario what would be the activity which you would do if you have an answer to that question that would be your passion because 95% are probably 99% of the world they do a profession they take up a particular job because they feel that the job is secure and that job earns is a good source of income and there's nothing wrong in that but the point really is a passion is something which you like to pursue irrespective of the material gains or of and he says the surfer says the easiest way and the most pragmatic way to awaken that heart or rekindle that heart is to pursue your passions now this might seem very simple but all the great things are always simple we human beings like to make things complicated and unless it is very complicated and served in sophisticated ways we don't value those things but he says that rekindling your inner passions is the most effective way to ignite that heart with him now coming to another point which he is emphasizing on he says that every human being as a child we were perfect but as we grow up where we are continuously bombarded with varieties of thought processes we are bombarded by conditioning of the society we develop a lot of holes in our personality and we seek outside things to fill those holes and in the process we empty ourselves we get into a particular job because we feel that job will give us a particular social status in society we get into a relationship thinking that relationship will make us happy the point the surfer is trying to drive here 
is not that we shouldn't do any of those or we should not aim to get into those but he is saying instead of thinking that I will get happiness if I get those things because that's a foolish way to function the more you are going to chase happiness the more happiness is going to be away from you because as I mentioned by the quote by Ramana Maharishi he says that happiness is never outside happiness is a state within and you can chase those things when you are happy with them there is a beautiful thought process which the surfer ignites he says that you can only give to the world what you have a beggar cannot help someone a beggar cannot help someone from a financial standpoint. A person who is lacking in knowledge cannot give anyone knowledge. A person who is himself amateur can't serve as an example of maturity. And he says he, he gives a lot of emphasis and importance on focusing on filling those holes. And one of the practical ways of filling those holes is to pursue your passion. He also says that, and remember the gateway to fulfillment swings inward, not outward. There's a lot of different ways he's bringing back, back to the same point. He is focusing heavily on the same point that instead of focusing outward, start focusing with them. The first priority of every human being, as far as I can tell, is to do the deep inside work, the inner work you just spe spoke of. And there's a beautiful quote which he quotes from Ralph Waldo Emerson. He says, without the rich heart, wealth is an ugly beggar. Now, let's understand what this rich heart means. Now, when we say a rich heart, a heart which does something selflessly, is a rich heart. Now selfless is such a rare quality in today's day and age because we do anything, we even give something to someone out of the expectation that we will be appreciated for that. Now this is the, you might see, you might think that this is the natural way to think. We might seek appreciation from doing something. But true richness of heart can be seen when people do charity or do some work of service which doesn't have an immediate material reciprocation, it doesn't have any kind of immediate material reciprocation. One example which I can think of immediately is doing feeding stray dogs because the stray dog cannot return its fav the favor which you did by feeding it. You didn't do a favor. I mean. The way I wanted to articulate that is, you didn't do a favor to the stray dogs. Vivekananda put it so well. He said, whenever you do any kind of service to anyone or any living creature or any human being, never think that you are doing a favor to them. In fact, be thankful to that person or to that living being who has given you an opportunity to serve. Never ever think that you are doing a favor. But wherever you are doing an activity where there is no immediate reciprocation from that person in gross physical means, that is selfless. And if you are doing something so that you gain appreciation, that is not selfless. It's very important to be constantly vigilant of our own intentions. So he is talking about rich heart in this context. Rich heart is not only about enjoying our life, having a good time. Rich heart is about how you can come out of your own thought process. It becomes less about me and more about we. There is a beautiful quote which I read many months before. It says, when I turns into we, illness turns into wellness. When you operate through this mindset of service, of contribution, automatically your, starts, your heart starts to expand because the very nature of consciousness, even if you take it from a spiritual standpoint, every person wants to expand. But the problem is we are trying to expand in the material dimension where the very confines are limited. 
But what we are essentially trying to do or trying to achieve is to expand the consciousness within. Any achievement which we get in the material sphere as well makes us feel good because we feel expanded. We feel our boundaries are pushed. Now this is a deep point I am hinting towards. But this is what is all about expanding your consciousness. The reason we naturally feel good when we are of service to something or someone is because the deepest need, the deepest longing of every human being is to be of value. And when that is fulfilled, you automatically feel good because you are igniting that happiness which was already there but we were unconscious of. And the surface says that live life in the moment. He is always pointing towards moving from the head to the heart. There is a beautiful point he is trying to make in this book which he says, wherein he says that we are always so occupied in trying to gain things or trying to fetch attention. But what we fail to acknowledge and what we miss are those small moments of life which are filled, which are filled with so much of breathtaking ease and bliss. We are so consumed between thoughts of past and future that we miss living life itself. Hope these lessons are making sense to you and when I went through this, I found them extremely pragmatic and practical. And one very interesting thing of this character of the surfer is, he says that whenever we are always looking for an outside approval or an outside means to get happiness or to fetch happiness, we are in a way confining our freedom and we are becoming slave to that outside impetus. And the more freedom we are curtailing, which is dependent on the outside stimulus for us to be happy, in simpler terms, the more our happiness is conditional, the more, this, the more slave we are to the outside world. And the more our happiness is unconditional, which is our true nature, the true nature of consciousness is happiness, the more we can be of service. Because a person who himself is a mess in himself, he cannot be of service to anyone. Hope my today's video was gratifying and hope it inspired you to connect to more to your heart and move away from your head to the heart. There is a lot of groundbreaking research on this concept called heart-brain coherence wherein scientists have researched and gathered palpable evidence as to what it means from moving to from a heart to a heart, head to a heart and how one can develop or how one can build this heart-mind coherence, heart-brain coherence. If you are interested, you can probably research on that topic and there are a lot of activities which has been suggested to build this heart-brain coherence. I hope my today's video was valuable. I try to distill because the book is uh, this content with the surfer, the conversations with the surfer is condensed in many chapters and if I talk about every chapter, the video will plunge or it will uh, cross an enormous length because I wanted to keep it confined to a certain amount of time, hence I have distilled the main focuses. For me, if you want to summarize what the surfer is trying to say, he is trying to connect this concept of inner awareness. This concept of self-love is heavily emphasized by the surfer. And he is always talking about mastering the heart. The very connotation, the very title of the conversation is saying meeting with the master of the heart. Hope my today's video was valuable and it made a lot of sense and hope it gave you inspiration to rekindle the inner child within. Thank you so much. If you like the video, do give me your valuable comments. Also share this video with couple of your friends. Do subscribe to my channel if you are enjoying the content which I am sharing on this channel. Thank you so much and I will meet you in the next video. Bye.